Morning of day five. Today we're heading into Phoenix, land of the future Hall of Famer and fellow Minnesotan, Larry Fitzgerald. Before we do that though, we're gonna go to a cafe, get some awesome breakfast, then it's heading to a hotel to pack the bike, to clean things up and get ready for my flight tomorrow morning. Now that random little Larry Fitzgerald bit is for the Patreon Brett. Thank you very much for supporting. And for my Patreons, I offered the choice of being able to put whatever information or see anything specific that you want in the videos. So Brett, you wanted me to mention Larry Fitzgerald? There it is, Larry Fitzgerald mentioned. Let's eat, I'm hungry. All right, my man, this is it, the trip is over. Thank you so much, this was a blast. I'll see you in the next one. It was fun actually getting to hang out with you. And uh, safe drive back to Colorado. We'll do this again soon. Until the next one. Until the next one. All right, brother. kind of becoming my thing that at the end of trips I get a hotel and then go try to get a bottle of wine and some ice cream just to finish off the night and enjoy my last night before going home all right here we are bike is packed it's ready to be loaded into the shuttle onto the airport now if you're curious at all about the logistics of this trip that's what we're about to go over how I made this whole thing happen so first, let's start with the bike. On my Great Divide videos, you'll see that in Colorado Springs, the bike shop gave me this box and it had a bunch of different foam pieces in there to help protect the bike. So I used my bike and all of my bike packing and camping gear and put it into this box that was essentially free. So if you want to do the same thing, you should be able to go to a bike shop and ask for a box and they'll get you one for free. Does it fit sideways? Perfect. Then for a destination, I chose the Fool's Loop. You start and stop in Phoenix. Now when the start and the end point are in the same spot, it makes the logistics a little bit easier, especially when you have a buddy like Andrew, who's coming driving down and he's gonna have his car here. Now if you don't have a car at your destination, that makes things a little trickier, but you can still do it. So when I arrived on the Tour Divide in Jackson, I obviously didn't have a car, so I put my bike together in some little non-busy part of the airport and then they were able to recycle the box. So you can do the same thing. You just can't bring as much stuff like this. The only last thing to factor in is food. So since Andrew was here with his car and I could leave my backpack in his car, I was able to bring a backpack and do the shopping before I came here. So went to Costco, got a lot of those fig bars, got some cliff bars, got XYZ things. But if you don't have a car, again, you probably can't bring all that stuff because whatever you bring on the plane with you, you'll have to then figure out a way to put on your bike. So on my trip on the Divide, I brought that little green backpack that folded up into like a little baseball. So you have to think about that and probably do your shopping at your destination. But once you get in, you can go buy the gas, you can go buy the fuel for your stove and buy your food, then you're all ready to bike back. There it is. So once you get all the logistics figured out and you go and enjoy your trip, then you get to come back home to your family. Hello. Hello.